Okay, we've been working on a swing gate here. It's been taking a quite a bit of time here, just uh, doing the engineering on it, looking up parts. Coming up with uh, how this is gonna all work out. Um, there's different uh, parts distributors. Uh, the bridge itself, uh, the downforce on the end of it, it's a 50 inch long gate. It has about 11 pounds of force on it. And the strut itself is a 20 pound <coughs> strut that you would use in a, uh, like a automotive car hatch, you know, like a trunk hatch or whatever. Uh, went to uh, liftsupport.com and got that. <coughs> but anyway, the action on it's really cool. It's very durable. A little rubber stop there. That way it doesn't clang on you. Uh, I can't overemphasize uh, strut location, how important it is. We actually flattened out the strut. I'll tell you about that in a second. We got another handle over here. So that way people aren't actually touching the bridge. be some centering points over here that way the uh, bridge will actually be perfectly centered every time it lands it will settle oh maybe up to a sixteenth of an inch off center either way but I've got some pretty cool centering pins that'll, that we'll use on that um, but we're real happy with the way this works uh, the way the strut works is it tends to want to hold that bridge in that, that position there, but actually it won't fall over. You can actually bring the bridge just a, almost to a 45 and it'll hold itself. But uh, then when you place the strut flat, even though it push, it has more force than the weight of the bridge, as it goes to a flat position, that weight starts transferring onto the end of the bridge and it wants to sit down. So it's pretty cool, pretty durable. Um, uh, we're gonna do another video on this as we get closer. I just wanted to do a little, um, just if you're interested in a swing gate like this, I would reach out to Dennis uh, Bartholomew at Engineered Layout Systems. He knows what he's talking about. We spent a lot of time doing our own engineering on this, but uh, Dennis, uh, he kind of sets these up in a package deal. If you're interested in something like that, he can really help you out. But like I said, we a couple of engineers working on it here. So if you don't have the time to do something like that and you need a nice uh, swing gate I would suggest that you reach out to Dennis and talk to him but anyway there's our swing gate and what that does that connects that other line and it's supposed to be create a natural barrier to keep people out of this area back here it's operational now um, just kind of show you a few things about it that we've kind of learned in the process. Um, the gate is a, the, the frame of the gate is 50 inches. Uh, by the time we get this gate open um, with the uh, strut location and the, basically the curvature of this, this area, we've got a 30 inch opening in here. So that's pretty good. Uh, I would assume that that's probably what everybody would like to see. Um, just a lot of engineering went into this thing, figuring it out. Something that I would suggest to you guys is if you're mounting that aluminum on something, you got to anchor it down really good. It wants to twist, it, you know, just because you're trying to get, trying to make a lightweight bridge. If you notice uh, this gusset here uh, from the last video, we actually flipped it upside down and moved it down. And that's because once we got everything mounted on the gate, 
the, the rest of the material and everything and increase the weight on the end of it. So we needed to change the angle of that strut to create, to create more up force on the end of the bridge. I uh, just kind of want to point out uh, the centering pins that we use. They are from a company called McMaster Car. You can get those for about 15 bucks a setup. So that's about 30 bucks that we used. On the centering pins, you can see they're kind of have a, a angled hole in there. And when that thing comes down, it uh, sandwiches in there. And that gives you a perfect alignment on your tracks every time. Um, something else I wanted to point out. Uh, you can see the, the, the rails are cut at an angle. Uh, we used an Atlas double track bridge. We took the plastic uh, ties off it and then we made it a single track with a curve in it. So this is kind of unusual. You know, you maybe never see that in real life, but uh, you know, we're using some modeler's license. Uh, something I would kind of point out is, you know, the rails are cut at an angle, so when it starts to open, they don't hit the end of the rails. Also, those rails, you know, as you, as you make your material thicker and thicker, it that rail travels in a horizontal fashion. That's why everything's kind of cut back at an angle, it's actually kind of a circular deal. So, uh, if you're gonna do something like this, you, you need to be prepared for this, uh, the upper rail to be protruding out about two, uh, two inches into this once it's completed. Uh, you can see what we did here, on our, our deal here, we uh, actually put some holes here and let it flow through the ties. Just to, It's about just to, not even the depth of the ties, but uh, we kind of knew that going in. Um, if we position the gate just a half inch farther away, then we wouldn't, we wouldn't have that deal, but uh, that's just kind of the way it came out. I also wanted to point out Uh, we use some 14 gauge uh, speaker wire here. You know, we're in the O scale and um, this came up right here and uh, soldered the wires on here. And you can kind of see, just kind of bed it around. But anyway, that's our gate. operation.